Hello, thank you for tuning in to the Warren Christmas Village channel. We've currently had our session zero, which started below the tavern in the cellar, and now we have did our first session as well. I'll be discussing how I pass along information to my player characters in this campaign. <coughs> After each work session at the end, the players roll a d20 and check either an investigation or an insight to find out some in to see what level of information they find out at the end. I've and what I do is I pre write information on index cards and pass those out to the players. And I have three levels of basically what kind of information people get. At the beginning of the sessions I have characters roll investigation as well as insight and that gives me a little clue as to where I should put which cards and who should get what. Uh, I will take some information and I will have a, a real, the, the, what really happened, I'll have something that maybe is a little, little off and then I'll have something that's completely off and then I'll have something that's pretty close to exactly what happened but maybe missing a couple details. That way it covers the very a variety of roles that I use for the players. For instance, if someone rolls a zero to five, they're gonna get something that's really not not the truth at all. If someone rolls a 20, I'll give them a couple of cards, and if someone rolls somewhere between a 10 and a 15, they'll get somewhere some useful information. What I do is I stack these cards up. People don't really know which cards they're getting for which, so I stack the cards up in little piles and then I hand them to the players. I also have the players roll a perception check, and that is for them to sp maybe spot something that uh, NPC has dropped in the dining room or in maybe the foyer of the inn. Uh, having worked in a lot of service industry jobs, people find all sorts of stuff when um, at, at a restaurant. Uh, and that's kind of how uh, I'm treating this. So also, players that roll very well on a perception check are more likely to find something in the dining area or the foyer of the inn. This is a very busy location and folks lose stuff all of the time. I have yet to have a player character turn something into Lost and Found. <laughs> So what I do is I offer uh, a chance for ca player characters to find something. They didn't really get any treasure last game, so this was a chance for them to get some treasure. They got some gold from the wench, and they also, some of them got some items that they found. Some of the items the player characters find are worthwhile. For instance, someone found a hairpin with some semi-precious stones. Sometimes money is found. Uh, a couple silver pieces here, a couple gold pieces there. Objects that players find often have clues as to what the shenanigans are that's going on in town. Players have been finding bits of parchment that have been destroyed in, in some manner. Some have been torn up and some have been burnt, but there's still been a little bit of a legible part going on. Players have been finding clues, ripped up pieces of parchment paper and burnt, rapidly burnt parchment paper. Something's going down, they don't know what. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that they find in the dining room. Also useless items like, you know, a, full, a finely uh, exquisite folding fan. I'll, I'll look, th sometimes I'll look through the mundane items in the player's handbook and that's what they get. Or the trinkets, I'm sorry, they're called trinkets. The trinkets table and that's what players, I'll, I'll write those down on a card. So I, I find that this uh, index card method is a great way for um, players to interact with each other to find out maybe Winifred said something about the the prison break and then maybe the wench said something else and then maybe uh, maybe a town guard came in and mentioned something about it as well. So that way the players can kind of correlate their data if they want. Also, if um, a player character finds something, not all of them share it with the rest of the group, which I find interesting. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's how I handle the information cards or the gossip cards, and they're also a great source for quests. I am playing a sandbox game, and that can be a little complicated sometimes for players. So what I'm offering is quests. For instance, Mrs. Merriweather keeps coming in talking about goblins stealing things from her garden. There's also been some kind of dramas going on with Butcher Jebediah Jones, but no one's decided to investigate that yet. And Mrs. Merriweather's been coming in every day talking about a goblin problem in, near her house. The previous day they had stole some of her chickens and kicked her dog. Last night they came in and she saw one that was running off with a pumpkin. It hissed at her. And she's also mentioning that her favorite hound dog is missing. Hmm. 
Could the two be related? You tell me. Mrs. Merriweather came in on day one and was reporting that her goblins had stolen some of her chickens. On day two, she came in saying that a goblin had stolen a pumpkin from her pumpkin patch and hissed at her, and mysteriously now her dog is missing. So that's a lead to go check out with Mrs. Merriweather if you want to go take care of a goblin problem. And in session one, Dr. Watkins came in and was offering a reward for anyone brave enough to go to his family farm to exterminate a giant bug problem that had come back. The chef also mentioned it, or I think it was Vera the cook also mentioned that there was a bug problem at the Watkins farm. And I think uh, Winifred, yes, Winifred mentioned some cattle bandits. So that's an example of three different different ways to figure out what's going on. And we all know Winifred's a gossip and gossips never really always get their, gossips don't always get their information right. <laughs> so yeah, that that's how I like to uh, use the information cards and I think it's working out pretty well. One of my players said that she thought it was a little bit odd at first because it really isn't something that uh, I've never really encountered a lot of DMs doing. I think it works and it, 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 a lot, it gives a, a reason for players to start a dialogue with each other uh, for instance, they can say, oh, I heard this, or I saw this, or the wench told me this, that kind of thing. <coughs> so now it's time for the recap. Having finished their morning and early afternoon shift, one of the employees of the inn had talked to Dr. Watkins and had found out that he was offering a reward for some brave people to go and exterminate some giant bugs at his farm. A couple of the other players had heard rumors about something with giant bugs at the farm so they decided to go check out the apothecary Dr. Watkins and see what he see what he had to offer. Since Dr. Watkins was offering a reward that's exactly where the player characters decided to go first. After leaving work they headed straight to the apothecary and inquired about the reward. It turns out there are some giant bugs that live underground that spit acid that have been plaguing his family farm. His family had the same problem three years ago, but they thought they had taken care of it. So the players asked some questions. They also got him to figure out what these mysterious vials that they found in the dining room were. Turns out he made them, so he knew exactly what they were. After agreeing to take care of Dr. Watkins' family farm, the players had to go back to the inn to get their shifts covered. That involved a little bit of persuasion checks and a little bit of, of role playing and figuring out. The Watkins family farm was about a six hour walk from the village Hamlet and the player characters tried to get the wench to give them a wagon and a horse so they wouldn't have to walk. The wench said no but that she'd rent them one. After some haggling, some unsuccessful haggling, the player characters had decided to try a different tactic and brought up the giant rats that they killed with a room full of customers busy eating. The wench quickly shuffled them out of the dining area and into the kitchen and told them that she would rent them the wagon and horse for three gold and that they better be back tomorrow and that they should leave right away and that she didn't want to hear any more discussion about the giant rat problems. So the characters managed to hustle a wagon and a mule at a reduced price from the wench, which is pretty impressive. The player characters made it to old matron Mother Madrigal Watkins Farm without any kind of incident. The 800 year old ancient elf had given birth to many elves and half elves in the local area and was well known and loved by many. The player characters quickly found the location of the underground dwelling bug by using vibrational capabilities with their spells and uh, abilities because of thaumaturgy being a tiefling. They lucked out and found the right spot and the bug quickly emerged. A battle quickly ensued and the players were able to quickly vanquish the bug problem from the Watkins farm. After vanquishing the giant insect, Fluffy, the half work barbarian, used some of his hunter skills and was able to successfully remove the acid poison sack, which he planned to take back to Dr. Watkins or someone in town. Old Mother Madrigal Watkins had a glorious feast for them afterwards and let them spend the night in the ultimate comfort of her farmhouse and then cooked them a delicious breakfast and sent them on their way with a new cow as payment that they had managed to hustle out from the old woman. And as the player characters made their way back to Hamlet, with the cow hustled from old matron Madrigal Watkins in tow, they reached a certain point in the swampy forest, 
and all the sounds in nature went silent upon their arrival.